The 1977 American Motors Pacer Custom Panel by AMT, coming up next. Hello once again model car builders, here I stand in front of the American flag once more, which means that it's American Motors time right down here at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. So anyway, without further ado, let's rip the lid open on our custom pacer panel and see what's in the box. Right on, right on. We're heading all the way back to 1977, where I can be your boogeyman, as we're taking a look at the Pacer Custom Panel by AMT. Now this is an original kit from that time period, and as you can see, it is pretty slick. It's almost sort of got a Chevy Monza front end going on in here. And here we have a nice side profile of our Pacer. This, of course, being an artist's rendition of it. And you can see the nice panels in the side, as well as these really funky doors. And over here is a little box saying about painting your model, and it calls out for Pactra and Tester's paints. And up on this side of the box, we can see this amazing American Motors straight six engine, baby moon wheels, the amazing custom hood, and the custom grill with custom bumpers and a chin spoiler. And now we'll lift the lid off this amazing kit and see what's inside. Now this is a model I got second hand, so there's going to be some interesting things about it. But first off, we have our instruction sheet right here. There's our decals, which we'll take a look at at the end. Now I did put the chrome and glass in this plastic bag just to protect them a bit. There's our body with one of the half tires. This does have the two-piece tires in it. Then we've got a bunch of our parts trees, as you can see. There's our cool hood right there. Then the rest of those tires. Oops. There's our axle and all that. And again, some more cool stuff. Now I did use this box before. This is actually a little write-up I did on the Wayne's World Pacer. <laughs> you can see it's uh, vintage here. This was done about 1992. Then all the glues turned yellow. But at any rate, there's inside the box. Now let's carry on by taking a look at our Pacer Custom Panel Instruction Sheets. And down here we've got our tools for what we need to build this kit. Now our first panel shows our engine going together. And here we've got an air conditioner pump, alternator, we've got our big belt assembly, which you're going to see in the parts, which is really crazy actually. Then we've got our fan and our steering pump, the front engine cover, intake manifold. Now the exhaust manifold is molded in on the block. And then we've got our carburetor here, our air cleaner. Interesting, it crosses over here, but the air intake is down here. And then there's our valve cover and our distributor right up in the front. Panel 2 shows our interior being assembled. Here we have our steering wheel, which goes into the instrument panel. We've got a CB radio, which was very popular in the 70s, and its location is optional. Then we've got our two front bucket seats, which have a front and a back to them. There's a shift lever, there's a center console, and then our rear back bench seat has a front and a back as well, which all go into this interior pan. Panel 3 shows our body assembly, and there are quite a few things you need to do to alter the stock pacer to accept the custom pieces. One of them is to remove the brace in here for our window, which of course is going to be replaced with a solid piece of plastic. And then here we've got our rear filler for the back window, which makes it look like a panel van. There's our glass, our chrome mirror, our side mirrors, which are not chromed. Then we have our radiator overflow and window washer bottle tank, the breather vent, battery, vacuum canister, again a pollution device from the 70s. There we got our master cylinder and our vacuum canister. Here in panel 4 we have our chassis assembly, we have our exhaust system, we have shocks, we've got the differential and the drive shaft as one piece, these nice leaf springs, there is a rear engine mount just to hold the, this all together, then we have our front suspension, uh, we've got an anti-sway bar, our chassis, and then our wheels, and these have the two-piece tires in them. Ugh. <laughs> and then we've got a metal axle. Now I'm going to try to do our tires, as you'll see later on. I'll give you some hints on that toward the end of the video. And then we also have these front axle blocks, which will glue in. And that, of course, there's our top going down and all the rest. Panel 5 shows our final assemblies. And here we have the window filler blanks going in on the side, which you glue in place. Then we've got our custom hood, which drops on. It does say you could glue this down, but who would want to? I mean, 
you're going to cover up all that nice detail under there as well as the engine and never be able to see it again. So I'm going to leave mine open. And then here we've got our front end cap, they call it, gluing in. And that's got our headlights as well as our grill and these really cool running lights or maybe even fog lamps down below. There's our front bumper and our license plate. The assembled interior will glue onto the chassis and then the whole body will pop on in place. The kit comes with two antennas and their location is optional. There is sort of a side mounted thing which would be somewhere maybe around the hood. I'm not too sure. And then one that would be flat and that could glue on the center of the roof. One of these is for the radio, one of them's for the CB. Doesn't really matter what you want to do there. However, we do get a rear license plate popping in the back, our two tail lights, the rear rolled pan, and our two bumperettes. So before we begin to take a look at the plastic pieces, I just wanted to share this with you. I have a 77 AMC Gremlin, and this is the original owner's manual out of that, which is good for Pacer, Gremlin, Hornet, and Matador. So as we check the plastic pieces, I'm going to take a look at this and just show you how AMT matches up to what's in the owner's manual. And here we have the body of our Pacer. Now, I did start to work on this a little bit. I glued on that front end. One thing that I did do inside here is I used a little bit of Plastruct, cut off a couple of pieces and glued them up front just to reinforce that front end because it only glues on this little tiny bit right here. So just to get a little more in there is a lot better than having nothing at all. Here's the hood for it. And as you can see, it does fit on nicely, although there are a few gaps. And I'm not really sure if I should fill in the body panel and smooth it out or just leave it the way it is because this is sort of like an impact bumper on the front and that little bit of, you know, overlay, overhang, pardon me, is sort of where this would go if it got in a front end crash just on the recoils. But again, you can see that fits nice. There's a little bit of a gap in here, but that's okay. I'll just take that hood off for a moment. Now you can see the nice uh, rack on top of the roof. Very nice. A lot of great detail. This one does have Pacer written in script on the side. Over onto the back, it's got the AMC logo and all the rest. Hey, hit that like button if you actually owned a real Pacer wagon back in the past and let us know how you enjoyed it. So anyway, turning it upside down, you can see these little six holes in the top of the roof. That, of course, is for a luggage rack, which is in the stock version of this kit. Unfortunately, it's not in this version. There are some mold marks on the roof, which you can scrape down or, you know, just cover over with a glass piece. And again, like I said, this all fits together very nicely and looks good. Next, we'll take a look at the interior tub. And as you can see, again, very nice detail work on here. AMT was doing really well with this kit way back in the 70s. You got your three floor pedals up there. There's no mold marks in the carpet, but there are a little bit on the top of here and here, which can easily just be filled in with some putty and then cross sanded for absolute smoothness. Very nicely done. The panels look correct. I did know a friend of mine actually had a, his dad had a pacer back in the early 80s. Actually, I guess late 70s. Again, you can see underneath there's a couple of little holes in there just so that this matches up onto the floor pan. And again, very nice work by AMT. And speaking of that chassis, here it is. Now, AMC used a unibody on these cars back in the day. So you'll see that the frame rail, it stops about here. And then that would carry on to the side panels of the body. And then there it is on the back. Again, we've got this nice gas tank right here. And I do believe the spare tire is sitting on top of that gas tank. And then there's our shackle ends for our leaf springs going in and uh, all the rest. You can see the nice detailing on that floor pan there. Again, very nice work by AMT. Now these are all the components that make up the white plastic parts and the rest of the kit. And as you can see, there are quite a few parts trees going on here. So we'll take a look at those in closer detail. Back in 1977, there was a lot of regulations that came in on engine emissions. And AMC addressed that with this air guard system that they had. And this shows the side of that six cylinder engine and talks about the PVC or positive crankcase ventilation system, which would have been quite new for that era. Here we have all the components that make up our engine, as well as the items under the hood. And here we have the engine block and transmission, which were molded as two pieces. This one was glued together. There we have our exhaust pipe as well. And this one does not have the catalytic converter on it, but that's okay. 
So as you can see here on our engine block, there is a little hole right here. And that of course is for a metal axle to go through. There is a little bit of uh, misalignment here on this engine. So if you're building it, pop off all the little pins and then glue it together just to get a little better. There is a sink mark on the transmission pan right there. Now it's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Anyway, the part of the exhaust manifold is molded into the side of the block. And then on this side we have the oil filter sticking out and the starter motor down there. But overall this does look quite correct for the AMC six cylinder. So moving that out of the way, here's our parts tree with the air cleaner on it, as well as this really complicated system of belts and pulleys. So this car probably has power steering as well as power brakes on it. Then there's our fan, the cylinder head cover, or actually the valve cover. Then the intake manifold, there's our battery, alternator back up here, and then there's a whole bunch of those little pollution devices and power steering pumps and all of that. And then our brake master cylinder and parts of the air conditioning system and our little washer and radiator overflow bottle. Here we have our suspension components. And as you can see, there's not very many, but they are done well. We have our differential and drive shaft as one unit. Then we've got these leaf springs that actually hook onto the differential at the ends, which is nice. Shock absorbers. Then here we have the blocks for our front axle, as well as one of these uh, stabilizer bars. And then we have our front end, our front suspension, all molded as one piece. This is using the rack and pinion suspension, which I do believe was unique to American Motors only in the 70s. And not many domestic American manufacturers had rack and pinion steering. That was sort of a European invention, I guess. Uh, yeah, again, as you can see, this is really hard to see with the white. But there it is underneath from the underside. You can see they've got all the little details in, just as it should be. The little locks for the shock absorbers to fit in, which is quite nice. There's our wheels. Now, unfortunately, you don't get stock wheels in this kit. As you can see, one end is deeper than the other. So again, nicely done. Meant for the metal axles, of course. And then there's our rear differential. Again, not very uh, much detail on it, but it will get the job done. A few mold marks here and there, but nothing major and should go together quite well. Getting back to our 1977 AMC owner's manual, we have this wonderful illustration of our Pacer instrument panel. And from my understanding, this dashboard was actually special for this car back in the day as a safety device because the height here was designed so that if you were to get into a head-on collision and the passengers started to slide forward, their legs would be able to go underneath where the glove box is, and all of this was padded. So again, nice safety feature. Now as we look at this illustration, we can see our AC heater air outlets. This is the liftgate window wiper washer button. And then we've got our rear defogger here, as well as our AC heater controls, our radio, the clock, and the tachometer as one piece. Our instrument cluster, the light switch, our AC heater air outlet underneath. That was optional, of course. The hood latch and, yeah, the hood latch release. And then our parking brake release over here. And here is our instrument panel for our model kit. And as you can see, pretty much everything is there. Even, I do believe it includes the air conditioner unit. There's a nice vent on the top, right there. <laughs> and yeah, it looks really accurate according to our illustration. And these are the rest of the interior components. And again, you can see they are quite nice. Here we have the center console. We've got a custom steering wheel, which is really like a rally race type wheel. Pretty cool. And then we've got our shifter lever here and the back seat. Now I did glue the pieces of the seats together. There's the back matting on the rear of that seat, as well as a nice upholstery pattern. I still have to clean off all the little attachment pins from the parts tree. But again, these seats look very much like the way they are supposed to look in the actual pacer. So quite nice work. And of course, our little box here has the latch, which would make this hinge open that way. So you can put in your tape cassettes or eight tracks, whatever you had back in 77. Maybe listen to Boogie Wonderland. And speaking of the radio, we have two antennas on here. 
which of course is optional as to which ones you want to use. One has more of a hook on it for maybe putting on the rear bumper or something, and then the other one could be mounted right in the dead center of the roof, or wherever you see fit. And here is our CB radio, which of course was very popular back in the 70s, as well as we have these two nice license plates. Here we have all the custom pieces for our pacer. Now these include the window blanks for the sides, as well as the window filler for the rear window. This is a rolled pan, which includes our rear bumpers, and then these are our side mirrors. Now the bumpers in this kit are not chrome, they're actually white plastic, so you could paint these body color or paint them a nice silver color to use as a bumper. This one goes into our front rolled pan, and these ones go on the back right here and here. Here we have the windshield and glass components that make up our pacer kit, as well as these nice red tail lights. So what can be said about the glass? Well, it's done in the old way with the bridge connecting everything together. I do have a few little scratches on here, which hopefully I can get out with that new finished wax that I use. Again, it's very nicely done. There are some sink marks up here and of course the numbers, but you can always cut this out or maybe even, if you're careful, dremel this back just so that you don't have these big rails sitting up through the roof. But again, that choice is yours. We'll just move the glass off to the side. And here are the tail lamps. And as you can see, they look like the ones on the box art. They do have the proper uh, divisions in here, just like on the real pacer. So again, very nicely done. And these should all end up looking really great on your model. And here we have our chrome components for our 77 pacer. Now, unfortunately, for a custom car, there is not really much chrome on this at all. We have our nice baby moon hubcap wheels here, which are very beautiful. Then we've got these fog lamps in here that go up underneath in the front uh, rolled pan. And then here we have our grill. And then we've got quad square headlights, which are pretty new in the 70s. I do believe the first time we see these is in 1975. And then our last piece of chrome is that little rear view mirror. Here we have the tires for the kit, and these are Goodyear Rally GTs. And they are two-piece tires. See, like, if I do that... <laughs> Now they do hook in through the sides, and uh, I do believe that you can use crazy glue to hold these together. I'm going to give it a try. I do know that normal plastic glue will not work because these are a special kind of material. However, as you can see, they do have a nice tread on here. So I'm going to have to experiment with these with my wheel spinning tool and see if I can't get out the flash down the center. So if you're ever hungry, go down to Tony Paco's Cafe in Toledo, Ohio, for the best Hungarian hot dogs with the American hot jazz. He's known as a paprika pusher. <laughs> anyway, these are the decals that you do get in the kit, but unfortunately they don't give you any layout as to where they go. Now obviously these would go into the side windows in the back, but what about all these nice red and yellow stripes? There are some 90 degree curves in here, which would be quite nice, or maybe that's more of a 30 degree? Put two together you get 90? I'm not too sure. And then here we get these uh, American-style AMC 77 license plates. So again, pretty nice decal sheet. Well, I don't know where those stripes go, but I could sure use one of those Hungarian hot dogs. Hey Trevor, do you think you can make me one after you film this thing? Yeah, I guess so, Danny. Okay, thank you. Mmm, that'll be good. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that amazing look at our 1977 American Motors Pacer Custom Panel by AMT. This is one of those really <laughs> rare, weird old kits. I'm keeping this one. I'm going to build it, actually. I love this metallic green and everything they got going on here. I'm sure you guys can find it in a good web hunt out there. Um, we don't have this in stock. However, we have a lot of model kits on our website. They're newer ones, and I can always get some more in. And hopefully round two will pop this thing out again sometime soon. So you want to check it all out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. That's our website. <laughs> and you can go over there, check it out. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on this YouTube channel so that I can get more and more viewers and build this thing. I really want to grow it out as big as we can. So please help me. Anyway, until next time, everyone, stay weird. <laughs>